Hi. I was just looking at the camera and noticed how shiny my head is. I'm sorry if any of you are sensitive to light, because you may be blinded by the reflection off my dome. But forehead. My forehead, yes. My forehead has become like a five, six, seven, eight, nine head. It's a big old head. That's all I'm saying. It's kind of bumpy. I don't know. Anyway, we are here for another chapter on Facebook Live. Chapter of Scarecrow of Oz. The ninth book of the Oz series is time for chapter 15. Did you know you can find all these uh, videos that I record on YouTube as well? Uh, I think you just go to YouTube and search my name. Uh, which you'll know my name because it's the name of the person whose live video you're watching right now. Joshua McDevitt's Paul. If you search that on YouTube, you can find all of the Oz videos starting all the way back at book one. So if you've missed some, you can catch up and watch all the videos um, they're all in like playlists and stuff. I've tried to make it real easy to use and organized and stuff. So yeah, but we are ready for chapter 15 of Scarecrow of Oz. Chapter 15 is entitled Trot Meets the Scarecrow. So let's find out what that's about. Trot and Pon covered many lengths of ground, searching through forests and fields and in many of the little villages of Jinxland, but could find no trace of either Cap'n Bill or Button Bright. Finally, they paused beside a cornfield and sat upon a stile to rest. <coughs> Excuse me. Pon took some apples from his pocket and gave one to Trot. Then he began eating another himself, for this was their time for luncheon. When his apple was finished, Pon tossed the core into the field. Chuck, Chuck, said a strange voice. What do you mean by hit me in the eye with an apple core? Then rose up the form of the scarecrow, who had hidden himself in the cornfield while they while he examined Pon and Trot, and decided whether they were worthy to be helped. Excuse me, said Pon. I didn't know you were there. How did you happen to be there, anyhow? Asked Trot. The scarecrow came forward with awkward steps and stood beside them. Ah. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, you're the gardener's boy, he said to Pon. Then he turned to Trot, and you are the little girl who came to Jinxland riding on a big bird and who had the misfortune to lose her friend Cap'n Bill and her chum, Button Bright. Now, how do you know all that? she inquired. I know lots of things, replied the Scarecrow, winking at her comically. My brains are the carefully assorted, double distilled high efficiency sort that the Wizard of Oz makes. He admits himself that if my brains, that my brains are the best he ever manufactured. Well, I think I've heard of you, said Trot slowly as she looked the Scarecrow over with much interest. But you used to live in the land of Oz. Oh, I do now, he replied cheerfully. I've just come over the mountains from the Quadling country to see if I can be of any help to you. Who, me? asked Pond. No, the strangers from the big world. It seems they need looking after. Well, I'm doing that myself, said Pond, a little ungraciously. If you'll pardon me for saying so, I don't see how a scarecrow with painted eyes can look after anyone. If, if you don't see that, you're more blind than the scarecrow, asserted Trot. He's a fairy man, Pond, and comes from the fairy land of Oz, so he can do most anything, I hope. She added, turning to the scarecrow, I hope you can find Captain Bill for me. I'll try anyhow, he promised. But who is that old woman who's running toward us and shaking her stick at us? Trot and Pond turned around and both uttered an exclamation of fear. The next instant they took to their heels and ran fast up the path, for it was old Blinky, the wicked witch, who had at last traced them to this place. Her anger was so great that she was determined not to abandon the chase of Pon and Trot until she had caught and punished them. Sorry about the yawning. It's, it, we've had a crazy week here. We've been staying up way too late every night, so I am a little bit tired. <laughs> The Scarecrow understood at once that the old woman meant harm to his new friends, so as she drew near, he stepped before her. His appearance was so sudden and unexpected that Blinky ran into him and toppled him over, but she tripped on his straw body and went rolling in the path beside him. The Scarecrow sat up and said, I beg your pardon, but she whacked him with her stick and knocked him flat again. Then, furious with rage, the old witch sprung upon her victim and began pulling the straw out of his body. The poor scarecrow was helpless to resist, and in a few moments all that was left of him was an empty suit of clothes and a heap of straw behind it, beside it. Fortunately, Blinky did not harm his head, for it rolled into a little hollow and escaped her notice. 
Fearing that Pon and Trot would escape her, she quickly resumed the chase and disappeared over the brow of a hill, following the direction in which she had seen them go. Only a short time elapsed before a gray grasshopper with a wooden leg came hopping along and lit directly on the upturned face of the scarecrow's head. "'Pardon me, but you're resting yourself upon my nose,' remarked the scarecrow. "'Oh, are you alive?' asked the grasshopper. "'That is a question I've never been able to decide,' said the scarecrow's head. "'When my body is properly stuffed, I have animation and can move around as well as any live person. "'The brains in my head you are now occupying as a throne are of very superior quality and do a lot of very clever thinking.' But whether that is being alive or not, I cannot prove to you. For one who lives is liable to death, while I am only liable to destruction. Seems to me, said the grasshopper, rubbing his nose with his front legs, that in your case it doesn't matter, unless you've destroyed already. I am not. All I need is restuffing, declared the scarecrow. And if Pawn and Trot escape the witch and come back here, I'm sure they will do me that favor. Tell me, are Pawn and Trot around here? inquired the grasshopper, its small voice trembling with excitement. The scarecrow did not answer at once, for both his eyes were staring straight upward at the beautiful face that was slightly bent over his head. It was indeed Pr Princess Gloria, who had wandered to this spot very much surprised when she heard the scarecrow's head talk and the tiny gray grasshopper answer it. This, said the scarecrow, still staring at her, must be the princess who loves Pawn the gardener boy. "'Oh, indeed!' exclaimed the grasshopper, who of course was Captain Bill, as he examined the young lady curiously. "'No,' said Gloria frigidly. "'I do not love Pond or anyone else, for the Wicked Witch has frozen my heart.' "'What a shame!' cried the Scarecrow. "'One so lovely should be able to love. "'But would you mind, my dear, stuffing that straw into my body again?' The dainty princess glanced at the straw and at the well-worn blue munchkin clothes and shrank back in disdain but she was spared from refusing the scarecrow's request by the appearance of Trot and Pon, who had hidden in some bushes just over the brow of the hill and waited until old Blinky passed them by. Their hiding place was on the same side as the witch's blind eye, and she rushed on in the chase of the girl and the youth without being aware that they had tricked her. They could have gone to her blind side at any point. That's kind of the downside of being a one-eyed witch, I'm just saying. Trot was shocked at the scarecrow's sad condition and at once began putting the straw back into his body. Pon, at sight of Gloria, again appealed to her to take pity on him, but the frozen-hearted princess turned coldly away with a sigh. The gardener's boy began to assist Trot. Neither of them at first noticed the small grasshopper, which at their appearance had skipped off the scarecrow's nose, was now clinging to a wisp of grass beside the path where he was not likely to be stepped upon. Not until the scarecrow had been neatly restuffed and set upon his feet again, when he bowed to his restorers and expressed his thanks, did the grasshopper move from his perch. Then he leaped lightly onto the path and cried out, Trot! Trot, look at me! I'm Captain Bill! See what the Wicked Witch has done to me! The voice was small, to be sure, but it reached Trot's ears and startled her greatly. She looked intently at the grasshopper, her eyes wide with fear at first. Then she knelt down, and noticing the wooden leg, she began to weep. Sorrowfully, she began to weep sorrowfully. Oh, Captain Bill, dear Captain Bill, what a cruel thing to do, she sobbed. Don't cry, Trot, begged the grasshopper. It didn't hurt any, it doesn't hurt now. But it's mighty inconvenient and humiliating, to say the least. I wish, said the girl indignantly, while trying hard to restrain her tears, that I was big enough and strong enough to give that horde which a good beating. She ought to be turned into a toad for doing this to you, Captain Bill. Never mind, urged the scarecrow in a comforting voice. Such a transformation doesn't last anyway. And as a general thing, there's some way to break the enchantment. I'm sure Glinda could do it in a jiffy. Well, who's Glinda? inquired Captain Bill. Then the scarecrow told them all about Glinda, not forgetting to mention her beauty and goodness and her wonderful powers of magic. He also explained how the royal sorceress had sent him to Jinx Land especially to help the strangers, whom she knew to be in danger because of the wiles of the cruel king and the wicked witch. And that is the end of chapter 15, Trot Meets the Scarecrow. So, finally, the Scarecrow is playing an important part in the book, The Scarecrow of Oz. We knew it had to happen sometime, right? Maybe? Who knows? I'm looking forward to tomorrow night, chapter 16, Pawn Summons the King to Surrender. We are getting close to the end of this book, and I'm really excited for the next book. It's called Rinkatink of Oz, which is different because Rinkatink is not a character we've met before. I don't know who that is. 
So maybe he'll actually show up like near the beginning of the book. That'd be fantastic, right? We'd actually have the, the title character in most of the book. Who knows? I guess we'll find out tomorrow night right here, 8 o'clock, Facebook Live, as we read Chapter 16, Pawn Summons the King to Surrender. Good night, everyone.